Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, the 9th of May, and it's Europe Day. And a big happy birthday to Alan Bennett, Billy Joel, Paul Heaton, and Rosario Dawson. In new efforts to extend economic pressure on Russia, the government announced sanctions on 1.7 billion Russian and Belarusian goods, mainly on chemicals and metals, bringing the total value of products now restricted to more than £4 billion. These new sanctions come as Russia continued its strikes on Ukraine over the weekend, with missiles hitting the port city of Odessa and a Russian bomb hitting a village school in the Lahansk region, leaving 60 people confirmed dead. There was some good news, though, as the last civilians were evacuated from the Azovstal steel plant in Mariupol, as President Zelensky explained. We managed to save more than 300 people. In fact, we took all civilians out of the Azovstal plant and are now preparing for the second stage of the evacuation mission to evacuate those who are wounded. The remaining defenders hosted a Zoom press conference on Sunday evening and vowed to continue fighting. Zelensky also met with the G7 nations over Zoom on Sunday, at which the leaders agreed to intensify pressure on Russia and President Putin. On Ukraine's Remembrance and Reconciliation Day, Zelensky released a video from the town of Borodoyanka where he compared Putin's army to those of Nazi Germany. Our never again lasted for only 77 years. We missed the evil. It was reborn, again and now. This is understood by all countries and nations who support Ukraine today. Despite the new mask of the beast, they recognized him. The weekend also saw a host of visitors to Ukraine, with US First Lady Jill Biden visiting with Ukraine's First Lady Alela Zelensky in the town of Uzzaharod. The Director General of the World Health Organization visited Kyiv and brought a message of support for Ukraine's medical teams struggling to cope with the injured as the war continues. My message to all the people of Ukraine is that WHO stands with you. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was also in Kyiv to reopen the Canadian Embassy as diplomatic channels returned to normal. And uh, having the Canadian flag fly over the streets of Kyiv once again is yet another testament to the incredible strength and solidarity of uh, Canadians and Ukrainians and how we continue to be with them. And last but by no means least, there was an unexpected U2 concert as Bono and the Edge turned up to play in a metro station with local band and soldiers anti teller. Surely they've suffered enough. The local election results which rolled in across the weekend failed to deliver a clear picture for the UK's immediate political future. The Conservatives lost over 300 seats, but Prime Minister Boris Johnson was still putting on a brave face. It's mid-term and it's certainly a, a mixed set of results. We've had a tough night in some parts of the country, but you're still seeing uh, Conservatives going forward and making uh, quite remarkable gains. Labour leader Sakir Starmer, who's now awaiting the results of reopened police investigation over Beergate from 2020, was upbeat about Labour's results. Labour is very clearly turning the corner and now we're marching towards that general election. And after a good run of results for the Lib Dems, leader Sir Ed Davey wouldn't be drawn on the prospect of a coalition with Labour for the general election. If we make those advances at the next general election, we will topple lots of Conservative MPs. What happens after that can can frankly wait. That's hyperbole. It's two and a half years away. The Assembly elections in Northern Ireland saw a historic win for Republican Party Sinn Féin, who topped the vote for the first time ever and gained the right to nominate the First Minister. Sinn Féin Vice President Michelle O'Neill says it's a defining moment. Today represents a very significant moment of change, which I believe presents us all with an opportunity to reimagine relationships in this society on the basis of fairness, on the basis of equality and on the basis of social justice. All parties now have six weeks to agree how they'll form a new executive, but the Northern Ireland Protocol will be a key issue and Deputy Prime Minister Dominic Raab says the government will have to act to resolve it. But fundamentally, that Northern Ireland Protocol is not working for communities right across the piece. And you hear uh, that from communities across the political spectrum, so it does need to be fixed. Still to come on the Smart 7, there's a new doctor in the house and Dave does well at the BAFTAs. Right after this. Welcome back. Three.
Premier League trophy seems as though it may have slipped from Liverpool's fingers over the weekend as they drew one all with Tottenham while Man City beat Newcastle 5 0. That leaves City three points clear with a goal difference of four, and it's going to be hard for Liverpool to reel them in and prevent them from claiming a fourth title in five years. Manager Pep Guardiola was relieved to see the win after this week's Champions League exit. We spoke about the importance of win. But uh, don't play to score goals, play to play football. With 3-0, they have one against one against Eddie. It can be a 3-1, and he save it, and after we score two goals at the end. So... Sunday afternoon saw a big surprise for Doctor Who fans as the 14th Doctor was announced via social media. The new Doctor will be Shuti Gatwa, who is the star of Netflix Sex Education, which he was BAFTA nominated for. He's the first black and LGBTQ Doctor, and Russell T Davis, who's returning as showrunner for the next season, says his audition was blazing. Shuti was on the BAFTA red carpet, and he's really excited about his new TARDIS-based job. It feels really amazing, and it's a, it's a true honour. This role is an, it's an institution, and it's so iconic and it means a lot to so many people including myself so I feel very grateful to have had the baton handed over and I'm gonna try to do my best. The 75th BAFTA TV Awards took place on Sunday evening with Richard Aoade hosting for the Royal Festival Hall. There were some surprises as It's a Sin failed to win from any of its six nominations and Sex Education didn't win either of its two. TV channel Dave had a double win with Big Zoo's Big Eats and the rapper was delighted. Representation is so important. Growing up, there wasn't many chefs or people that looked like me on telly. And now there's young people watching us doing arting thinking, you know what? If these waste men can win a BAFTA, <laughs> surely we can. Anton Deck and Stephen Milhern picked up an award for Saturday Night Takeaway. Sean Bean and Jodie Comer picked up Outstanding Actor Awards. And Billy Connolly was presented with a BAFTA Fellowship. I couldn't be happier. It's, it's made me such a happy man getting these good attendance medals. Now that my career's out the window. This has been The Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7am. Have a great day. Written, produced and published by Daft Dogs.